This is meteorologist Mark Molnar. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. We're going to get right into the particulars of the tropics concerning all of the tropical factors concerning everything from the intertropical convergence zone coming off the coast of Africa uh, with the Saharan dust going on, how much that will play a factor, as well as the models. I'll break the models down over the next couple of weeks where we see that second tropical named system in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, or the Atlantic for that matter. I'll break it down for you. Big heat wave developing in the east after the record cold weekend in the northeast across the Memorial Day weekend. We're going to swing it the other way and go well into the 90s over across much of the southeast, expanding across the mid-Atlantic into the northeast. And guess what? Yep, we're going to get right into all the particulars of the weather for your Thursday. Severe weather potential for your Thursday across mid-Atlantic parts of the Northeast and the Deep South. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Subscribe, hit that bell button, and leave a comment or question if you'd like down below. Also, I'll leave that link to my Hurricane 2021 Outlook if you still haven't viewed that. So that's down below as well. Let's get right into it. And your all-important tropical update here for the Atlantic Basin. Look at this. Uh, we have a very... Um, very active intertropical conversion zone. One, two, three, four tropical waves lined up in a row. We got a lot of Sahara dust out there. It's helping to keep a lid on things. However, you know, the ITCZ is pretty far south this time of year, as always is. It's normal. Pushing those tropical waves into the northern part of South America. Now, many of you are wondering, okay, you see, you've seen it in the past if you watch my uh, video segments. Uh, that light colored yellow circle there over Florida, Cuba, Eastern Gulf of Mexico, Bahamas, Southeast coast of United States. This is in, in, this is an area that, as you know, is a medium range potential tropical interest, middle to latter part of next week on or after June 10th. A lot of the models are picking up on some sort of tropical low developing here somewhere near Cuba or west or east of Florida, depending on the model run as we go back and forth this far out it does we don't have anything definite but it is interesting it's noteworthy because the pattern is very conducive for this we have very high sea surface temperatures look at that big bermuda high developing it looks like practically the middle of summer here look at that big ridge in the east this is a lot of warmth that's going to set us up for that heat wave here in the eastern part of the united states too so i thought it was very noteworthy to mention this here right around the Florida area, Cuba, Eastern Gulf of Mexico, Bahamas. And I will go over this here momentarily with the forecast models. Let's take a look. Looking at the Gulf of Mexico satellite photo here in infrared, look at that. It's not too bad here across the um, Gulf of Mexico. We're looking at some showers and thunderstorm activity here across the western Gulf, but that's mainly with the westerlies here. I don't see any organized areas of shower and thunderstorm activity development at the moment. Um, as you know, June is the official start of the hurricane season, and things could really change. See that thunderstorm complex over uh, central Texas there? When any one of these comes off the coastline, we have to watch these for potential development. At this time, I don't see anything really coming off the coast at this point, but we'll have to watch it in the coming days. Taking a look at the rest of the tropical Atlantic satellite here in Caribbean, not much to talk about. We do have some Saharan dust uh, continuing to move westward here from the coast of Africa, uh, westward towards the Lesser Antilles. You can see it in that last frame before the sun sets. But that intertropical convergence zone there uh, continuing to be very vigorous for this time of year, just west of the Cape Verde. And there is a shower and thunderstorm cluster there on the north coast of Colombia there, just uh, entering the South Caribbean. We'll continue to watch that here. I don't see that developing. Uh, it could stay over land here as it continues towards the east-northeast. We'll continue to watch it here. If there is some shear in the upper levels there, you can see. And lots of showers and thunderstorms developing across Hispaniola and Cuba. Taking a look at the GFS run here, Tropical Atlantic. Um, this is starting out this week, and you can see lots of shower and thunderstorm activity here across the Caribbean, Caribbean islands, um, across the Gulf of Mexico, uh, for the most part is dry, but there it is. See it, uh, across East Florida there from, like, June 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, we get some sort of development that kicks in there. Uh, there's that big Bermuda high to the west, um, and this is steering all of this shower and thunderstorm activity, but there it is. An organized low-pressure system tries to get developing near Cuba and skips along in the direction of either Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, or the southeast coast. I thought that was worth mentioning here because many of the models are indicating that something 
will be forming. The details are sketchy at this point, but the pattern is there. Upper air pattern here across North America, there you can see it. It's basically flipped the tables from Memorial Day weekend, and we have record heat in the east instead of record cold. And that big Bermuda high sitting here in the east, that big ridge developing in eastern North America, temperatures will be well above average, averaging 15 to 20 degrees above average in many areas of the east, mid-Atlantic, and northeast here as dry conditions set in, and this sets us up for a summer-like pattern. All right, your Thursday across the Northeast, a look at that. So that's severe thunderstorms. We got the slight risk in the yellows, uh, just south of Albany into Binghamton, just east of State College, Scranton, Harrisburg, New York City, Atlantic City. And then we have the enhanced risk, just in areas just on the eastern suburbs of Harrisburg, just south of Scranton, west of Atlantic City. Washington, D.C. is in this enhanced risk for damaging wind, large hail, frequent lightning, Maybe an isolated tornado. We have this warm front moving in. This is going to be the start of the major heat wave that will be developing across the northeast. Anywhere from about a half an inch to an inch of rain out of this scenario. So uh, this severe weather will propagate across the area during the mainly the afternoon and early evening hours. Uh, so watch out for that. Damaging wind, large hail as far north as Binghamton and even Connecticut here. So watch out. This will be our big day here across the mid-Atlantic and parts of the Northeast. Outside of this zone, we'll have general rain, showers, and thunderstorms, but nothing really that severe. Temperatures will be getting up towards the lower 80s south of this warm front, uh, mid to upper 70s north of it. Thursday across the Southeast, a look at this. And along the Gulf Coast, it's actually not looking too bad here along the Gulf Coast. Uh, there is a 20 to 30 percent chance of an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, nothing severe. Uh, looking at mid upper 80s along the Gulf Coast in New Orleans, Panama City, Tampa, 92. This is a warm spot, has been the case the last couple weeks. And then we head up towards Atlanta, Georgia, Raleigh, Norfolk. This is where the trouble starts. Got this frontal boundary moving in from the northwest, that warm front moving up to the Virginia and North Carolina area. That is where we'll see the enhanced risk. Uh, Tornado threat is running a bit on the elevated side here. Damage wind, large hail, frequent lightning. And then we have the yellow zone extending all the way southward towards Atlanta and just west or northwestern of Charleston here. Uh, this is where we'll see damage wind, large hail. A little bit lesser of a threat, but still a threat to say the least. So that's why I've got you in this zone. So this is a fairly vigorous, uh, this is not like a major widespread severe weather outbreak, but it will be a problem. And here it is, Friday across the northeast. Uh, the cold front moving to the east here. This will scour out some of the clouds and showers. We still have a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms from I-81 corridor, Binghamton, Syracuse, Harrisburg on eastward, and then more like a 60% chance uh, Boston, New York City, Atlantic City, Portland, Bangor. Here we have a lot of... Um, Behind this front, uh, lower humidity, especially you get towards Lake Erie, like Ontario, will scour out some of those clouds dropping off as the precipitation moves east, anywhere from a quarter inch or less. And across the southeast for your TGIF Friday, look at that cold front pushing across the east, high pressure building in around Nashville there, uh, scouring out all those showers and thunderstorms. Along the Gulf Coast, we still have that 20 to 30 percent chance of showers and thunderstorms. Temperature warm spot once again is Tampa, 91, Panama City, 87, all the way over to Houston, 86, and New Orleans. Atlanta is a warm spot. Inland, 88. Uh, but we got that cold front pushing in. Nothing severe, though, with this. That's what's good. And Saturday across the northeast. Look at this. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. But look at this. Temperatures are on the rise. This is that advertised start of the heat wave that I was advertising you about. Double eights. Look at that from Binghamton, Scranton, Albany. And look at that. 90 in Harrisburg, 91 in D.C., near 90 in New York City and Concord and Burlington. So this is a very warm, toasty day across the Northeast. Get out there and enjoy. And Saturday across the Southeast. Look at this. Not too bad. High pressure, mainly in control to the Northeast here. Uh, we do have a lot of sunshine, but we also have that chance of shower or thunderstorm, uh, Florida. Uh, basically from Southern Carolina there, South Carolina, all the way towards Texas there. Southern parts of the southern states here. Uh, Panama City, New Orleans, Houston. Houston, there will be a better chance of rainfall, uh, anywhere from about a 50 to 60 percent chance later in the day. Uh, showers and thunderstorms developing. Nothing severe, uh, but we could get some heavy gully washers later in the day with some of those popcorn thunderstorms that do develop across the southeast here. So, Get out there and enjoy, but still keep an eye to the sky. 
and Sunday across the Northeast. Look at this. Wow. We're really building the heat here. In fact, the warm spot is, goes to Concord, New Hampshire, where it'll be 95 degrees, reaching the mid-90s. Humidity will be slowly on the rise. It's not going to be that out of control until probably Monday or Tuesday. But it will start to feel a bit much here across the Northeast. Look at this. Most areas eclipsing, hitting or eclipsing 90 degrees, 92 in Binghamton, Scranton. Um, 94 in Harrisburg, 92 in New York City as well, 89, almost near 90 in Atlantic City, 93 in Boston, 93 in Burlington, and they said the warm spot is Concord, New Hampshire, 95. This is going to be a baking day here across the Northeast. And Sunday here across the Southeast, we have a stalled out frontal boundary starting to wash out here across the Northeast, setting up shop. And it will be the focal point for some showers and thunderstorm activity. Most of Florida and Georgia and Alabama will be mostly in the 20 to 30 percent chance range, uh, mainly between the hours of 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. But here it is, Louisiana, East Texas. This is where we'll have some tropical moisture kind of feeding into this. So showers and thunderstorms will become likely, especially after 2 p.m. Uh, some, some could contain heavy downpours. Not looking at anything severe here. But more rain is likely across this area. Most temperatures getting into uh, the upper 80s, near 90 there in Atlanta. Tampa, once again, is the hot spot 93 and managing to get past 90 in Miami. We're still not looking at any tropical development here in the Gulf of Mexico as of yet. And here's the extended outlook for my hometown viewers in the upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York, northeast Pennsylvania, from Scranton to Binghamton, New York. Look at this. Thursday is the strong to severe thunderstorms mainly between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Up to a three quarters of an inch of rain is likely out of this storm system as the cold front moves to the northeast here and to the east. Uh, we will have those showers and thunderstorms potentially producing damaging wind, large hail, especially, especially from I-81 eastward here during the day on Thursday. Look at that Friday, another chance of showers and thunderstorms. 40 to 50 percent, maybe up to a quarter inch. But look at this, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. This is where we start the big heat wave across the northeast, across our area. Uh, near 90 on Saturday, and humidity will be on the rise towards later Sunday and Monday. Look at that, we get up towards 92 and then 94 for a high on Monday. This is going to be a really hot, and this doesn't go further, you know, beyond this. It's going to, the heat will build. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Northeastern. If you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button, the bell button, so you're alerted when one of these videos comes out. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, Media Mark. Subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com. Also, it's Weather Northeastern on Facebook as well, WX Northeastern, Twitter, MediaMark.com, and WeatherNortheastern.com. And Hurricane Video, if you haven't watched it for the 2021 season, my outlook, it's in the link down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, comment or question if you'd like down below.